Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and this is going to be part two of my overview of the Sunshine State books for 6th to 8th grade for the school year 2018-2019. Now I had originally planned to talk about all of these in one video but right as I, as I got to the end of the top shelf my camera cut off so I decided to go ahead and just split it up into two videos and so I will link a I will leave a link to the uh, top shelf video of, uh, in the description below and for this video I'll be talking about the books that are on the second shelf and those include my favorites from this list of 15. Now I explained a little bit in the other video about the Sunshine State books. They are chosen by the Florida Association for Media and Education each year, and this group is the 6th to 8th grade recommended reading lists. They are the Sunshine State Young Reader Award finalists for the year, and all the students who read at least three of them will be given a chance to vote on their favorite, so that by the end of the school year, we will come out with one winner. So let me go ahead now and start here on the bottom shelf and tell you a little bit about each book. This book is called Forest of Wonders. It is book one in the Wing and Claw series by Linda Sue Park. I believe it is available on audio, although I read it in print in physical form. And this book is about a boy from a family of apothecaries. It is a fantasy novel, and the uh, the family live near this Forest of Wonders, but they've been invited to come to the city to work on a, a project that the government is working on. So Rafa, our main character, really would love to go, but his father has decided that he and his mother um, and him will not go. However, Rafa's uncle and cousin have decided to go. Meanwhile, uh, Rafa has found an injured bat, and him and his cousin go into the forest in search of a vine that they believe will help to heal the bat. And so they find some of this vine and bring it back. And by using this vine on the bat, uh, the next day the bat is not only healing amazingly, it's talking. So that's a kind of an interesting story in and of itself. But the the vine it turns out to have some really interesting properties and some very unstable and unpredictable properties. And Rafa's cousin and uncle have already left for the city by the time Rafa discovers this. So he really feels like it's necessary for him to warn his cousin. And of course, his father has denied him um, access to the city, or you know, he has denied them the possibility of going. So Rafa has to sneak out and. Uh, basically hitch a ride to the city to warn his cousin. And when he gets there, uh, he discovers that there's something really sinister going on in the city in regards to animals. And so uh, I'll, I won't give you any more spoilers from there. But uh, it is a really interesting story. A little bit of a slow burn at first, but uh, I, I thought it was really good. And um, the themes are uh, friendship is definitely a big theme in this book. And also animal cruelty. Uh, I think if you are interested in uh, animal training and, uh, and animal issues, then you might be interested in this book. Uh, also, if you're interested in apothecary and healing herbs, then you might want to give this a look as well. So that is Forest of Wonders by Linda Sue Park. The next book I'd like to talk about is actually a National Book Award finalist. It's called Ghost by Jason Reynolds. And interestingly enough, this was included in the 100 books that, uh, that list of books that PBS has been talking about. There was a PBS special. I can't remember now the exact title, but I know there was 100 books that America Reads or something. And this is one of the books on that list. So uh, it is a, basically about a boy who could run. And it's a very short book, um, but this boy, he's from a very violent home situation. Uh, one day he happens to be watching the middle school track star run and he decides to challenge him. So the coach kind of takes a look at him and sees his raw talent and kind of starts to take him under his wing. Um, things are still really tough though um, and 
he goes by Ghost. That's kind of a nickname. But his name is Castle Cranshaw. And, um, you know, even though the coach has sort of taken him in and he's on the track team, he still ends up making some poor decisions. Um, the coach kind of helps him work through some things. And uh, it's a really good book. It's very moving, literally. <laughs> it's about track. And I think it's the first book in a series called Track. I'm not sure how many books. Uh, there may only be two books now. I don't know if there's going to be more or not. Um, but it's it's a really good book about believing in yourself, working towards your goals. And definitely, if you have an interest in sports, especially track or running, then uh, you might want to take a look at this book. So this book gets the award for the longest title ever. <laughs> this is How Lunchbox Jones Saved Me from Robots, Traitors, and Missy the Cruel. It's by Jennifer Brown. I don't believe it's available on audio. It is a really cute book. And actually, as you read the book, you discover that this title is very appropriate. Um, it is about uh, Luke Abbott. It's a contemporary story. And Luke goes to a school that never wins anything. None of their teams ever win. They are the the losingest school in in the uh, in the whole area. Their trophy case is empty except for a coffee cup that says "World's Best Secretary," and even the word "best" is crossed out, and it says "pretty good." Um, and they just, you know, they're really just kind of down on on everything. They, they're just not used to winning anything. And so one of the teachers, I believe it's a teacher, it might be the principal. Anyway, I think one it's one of the teachers, I believe, wants to start a robotics club. And he wants Luke to join because Luke is very good at video games. And Luke's father thinks he should join. And so basically he kind of gets roped into it, even though he really doesn't want to. He'd rather sit at home and play video games. Um, but he does end up joining. And, uh, you know, being from a, a losing school, things don't come easy easy for this team. Uh, they, uh, they just, you know, they work hard. They have, uh, well, at times they work hard and then at times everybody wants to quit. And, uh, it, it's just a really good story about teamwork and, uh, you know, stick, stick to itiveness, um, you know, competition, even when you don't win. And, uh, it's, it, it's just a really good, um, sportsman-like, story. Um, there's uh, just lots of good themes, you know, facing failure, also bullying. Bullying is a theme. Uh, I think if you have an interest in robotics and coding, then you might enjoy this as well. And I just thought it was a really good book. The next book is called The Van Gogh Deception by Darren Hicks. And this is a mysterious story about a boy who wakes up in an art museum and doesn't remember anything. He doesn't remember his name or how he got there. Um, well, I say anything. He does actually, strangely enough, remember a lot of things about art. and But he doesn't know how he got there. He doesn't know who he is or, or anything. He eventually goes home with a social worker and her daughter, and they take him back to the museum the next day to see if, you know, it will trigger any memories. And he... Um, he realizes that uh, he does remember a few things. And, and eventually, as things start coming back to him, he realizes that he's in danger. Uh, meanwhile, we get the side story of a criminal mastermind who is trying to find this boy. And uh, so there's that uh, story that kind of parallels the story of the boy. And it's just a really good mystery story. There's um, uh, The themes are... Um, memory loss and it's a mystery um, also if you are interested in art or art history then that plays into this story quite a bit uh, hence the name Van Gogh Deception uh, so it's really an interesting um, mystery story and I would recommend it so I've saved the last four uh, for last because they are my favorites. There's two fantasy and two contemporary. So let's start with The Girl Who Could Not Dream. It's by Sarah Beth Durst. And this is just a really fun fantasy story about a girl whose parents run a secret dream shop underneath their bookstore. And it's where... Um, Dreams are bought and sold to select customers, and they include nightmares. Um, the nightmares and the dreams are collected in dream catchers, much like this. 
and then their parent her parents run them through a distiller and bottle them and then their customers buy the dreams drink them and then they're able to experience those dreams now our main character is the daughter and she cannot dream on her own but if she drinks one of these dreams then the things in her dream come to life they become real and if if whatever is alive in her dream wants to come back with her into the real into real life it can so that opens up quite a lot of potential for some really interesting stories. Um, this, I thought, was a really good book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I listened to it on audio. It was narrated by Sunila Nankani, and uh, I just thought it was great. Now, it has themes of friendship, uh, good versus evil, uh, learning who to trust, uh, things like that. If you are interested in fantasy stories and also dreams and nightmares, then I think you would enjoy this book. The next book is Frog Kisser by Garth Nix. I loved this book. This was narrated on audio by Marissa Kalin. And this is, I wouldn't really call this a fairy tale retelling. It is loosely based on the Frog Prince, but it's about a young princess who goes on a quest to find ingredients for a magical lip balm, which will allow her to turn transformed creatures back into humans, or whatever they were naturally, and to ultimately defeat her step-stepfather, who is an evil sorcerer. And there are... Uh, nods to several classic fairy tales in this story. Uh, of course, there's, you know, your, what you would expect in a fantasy story, good versus evil, fighting evil, working together, doing what's, uh, you know, doing the right thing. And, uh, you know, definitely, if you are interested and enjoy reading fairy tale retellings um, or fantasy books, then I think you would enjoy this. I loved it. I buddy read this with Giselle Bradley, and I, I know that she enjoyed it too. And uh, I just, I, I loved it. I will definitely read it again. The next book is Restart by Gordon Corman. I listened to this on audio, then I went back and reread a lot of it in print. It's narrated on audio by a whole cast. Um, I believe Jonathan Todd Ross narrates the main character, Chase Ambrose. And then, like I said, there is a whole cast of uh, narrators for this book. I thought this was a fantastic book. It is a contemporary story about a boy who falls off a roof and hits his head and loses his memory. And as he's getting to know the people again, the people in his life, he starts to discover that he might not have been a very good person before his accident, and he may have done some very bad things. So this book is just a great book for starting over, forgiveness, friendships, making amends, um, and also it uh, there there are some nods to YouTube and making videos. Um, there's also a little bit of military history, also football. Our main character is a football player. So there's quite a bit of um, uh, interest, different things that, you know, that might interest you in this book. And I just thought it was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. I recommended it to my husband. He had to read a middle grade book for a library challenge. And so he read this one. And uh, I just thought it was a fantastic story. And if you force me to pick a favorite out of this whole list of 15, I think I would have to pick Short by Holly Goldberg Sloan. She's also the author of Counting by Sevens, which was a former Sunshine State book from a few years ago. And I absolutely loved this book. I did listen to it on audio. Then I went back and read it again in print. I neglected to write in my notes who the audio narrator was, but I will include that in the description below. This is a delightful contemporary story of about a girl who is cast in a summer production of The Wizard of Oz as a munchkin. I believe she is uh, maybe just coming out of fifth grade, going into sixth grade, somewhere around that age. And um, it's, it's a very character-driven book, really. Um, Julia is the main character. She's charming and witty and bright, and the, all the other quirky characters around her are just so interesting, and the scenarios that are 
formed in this book around these quirky characters just combined for a fantastic story. It's so entertaining. And uh, I just, uh, I fell in love with this book. I wrote down a whole page full of quotes that uh, are just so fun. And uh, really probably some of my favorite quotes all year. Uh, in fact, let me just, let me just read you one. Let's see here. I've got a whole page to choose from. Um, let's see. She says, um, I didn't know that Beatles were a big deal. Uh, uh, were a, oh, goodness, I should put my glasses on. I didn't know that the Beatles were a big deal music group that changed the way people thought about getting haircuts. Uh, they sang songs that were pretty good because you could still listen to them today and not get angry. If you were born at a certain time, which was a long, long time ago, you had a favorite Beatle. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it, some of the stuff she talks about is just so random, but it's just delightful what uh, what goes on in this book. It's just awesome. So uh, the themes of this book are growing up, uh, learning about people, stepping out of your comfort zone, and definitely if you have an interest and love of The Wizard of Oz and theater in general, then I think you would really enjoy this book. So that's it. Those are... Uh, that's the second half of the Sunshine State Young Reader Award finalist list. And uh, if you'd like to see what I thought about the other half, be sure you click on that video if you haven't already. So that's all for this video. I hope you are having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.